All righty. Well, let's get started here. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Dan Oak. I'm with the USDA and the National Lab for Egg and the Environment across the street. I'm helping co-lead this seminar series along with Professor Michael Thompson and Laura Freskin. Uh, today, we have, I think, what will be a very interesting presentation on topics that we don't hear about very often. Uh, the presenter is Professor Koshe Noborio from Meiji University in Japan. Professor Noborio's research interests are more broadly soil physics and environmental issues in soil and at atmosphere. More specifically, he studies how mass and energy transfers in the soil and in the atmosphere close to the soil, uh, how these transfers are affected by soil properties. And substances that he studies include water, greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxides, polyfluoral alkyl substances, mercury, and cesium. Professor Noborio uh, did obtain a bachelor's degree in egg engineering from Ehime University in Japan. Uh, a master's also in egg engineering from Totori University in Japan, and finally a PhD in soil science from Texas A&M. He then did postdoctoral fellowships at the University of Guelph and also here in Iowa State University. He has been at Meiji University since 2005. Uh, he, became, he became a full professor there in 2007. As you can read, uh, the title of his what looks to be a very interesting presentation today is Poor Water Behavior in Space and Radio Cesium Fallout in Fukushima, Japan. Professor Noborio, I'll turn the microphone over to you. Uh, welcome, and we look forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you for a kind introduction to me. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Kosuke Noborio. I'm going to start my uh, presentation now. Uh, gravity uh, varies from uh, place to place. We are on the Earth having a 9.8 meter per cubic second acceleration due to gravity. Let's call it 1G. Hold on. Let's call it 1G. When you go up to the International Space Station, you'll have microgravity very close to uh, zero gravity. On the moon, the gravity is one sixth of the Earth. When you travel to Mars, you'll have one third of Earth's gravity. You may know the movie called The Martian, the story about an astronaut who is accidentally left behind on Mars alone and survives to return home. He started to grow potatoes in the Martian soil. Katie Campbell Nelson of U University of Massachusetts Quote, it's probably harder to raise potatoes here on Earth. Let's find out if she is correct. <laughs> Water flows in unsaturated porous media is expressed with Darcy Buckingham's law. Adding the metric potential and the gravitational potential gradient times hydraulic conductivity gives the downward water flux density. We have for a long time assumed that if the gravity becomes zero or close to zero as microgravity, the uh, flux density is supposed to be expressed with the same as uh, equations for horizontal water uh, flux density. But 
Is it true? Does microgravity affect only the gravitational potential? This picture shows the cumulative infiltration using 1.5 millimeter glass beads with time. Cumulative infiltration under microgravity is suppressed compared to the horizontal infiltration under the Earth's 1G gravity. The experiment was conducted by Yendolar in the Soviet Mir space station back in 1993. Could the horizontal infiltration equation describe microgravity infiltration? No, it could not. But why does this happen? Let's look at what if affected by gravity in the horizontal water flux density equation. We usually assume that soil water is held in bundle of a various diameters of straight tubes. The metric potential is described as the, a force held in a tube. The force might be affected by gravity because gravity may affect surface tension, contact angle, or the acceleration due to gravity. The other factor, hydraulic conductivity, may be affected by gravity because it contains dynamic viscosity as well as, as, well as gravity. Gravity may alter the dynamic viscosity of water. So we conducted microgravity experiments using this small aircraft. The aircraft may made para parabolic flights to produce microgravity, the moon's gravity, and Mars gravity. Using an aircraft cost a lot, so we used 50 meter high drop tower and two meter high drop tower to produce microgravity. The 50 meter drop tower produced microgravity for 2.4 seconds, while the two meter high one does it for 0 0.6 seconds. Our laboratory de developed all the experimental apparatus. Gravity dependency of viscosity was measured with the forced vibration method. A solenoid vibrates two tiny puddles and the force to vibrate puddles changes, changes an electric current to solenoid according to the viscosity of a liquid. We put this instrument in the aircraft to measure the dynamic viscosity of water during different gravities from 1G to close to 0G. We found an excellent linear relationship between gravity and water viscosity. When the gravity became smaller, viscosity in the di denominator beco becomes larger, thus hydraulic conductivity K is small under microgravity conditions. We first thought that we had it, we had done it. Dynamic viscosity was the reason for the suppressed infiltration found in Yendelard's experiment. I proudly presented these results at the JAXA conference. JAXA is the Japanese space agency. After my presentation, a guy, uh, an ast astrophysicist, insisted that your results was wrong. Gravity should not affect dynamic viscosity because it's a fundamental property of water. So we did 
uh, an additional experiment. Mr. Nogawa <coughs> developed another apparatus to measure dynamic viscosity using a different principle of uh, uh, measurement based on hagen pose equation. This time, there was no moving part. He measured uh, pref pressures at two locations, piece of A and piece of B, in a 10-foot-long tubing. Mr. Nogawa dropped the apparatus from the 50 meter high five times to get dynamic viscosity and five, ty five times uh, measurement on the ground. He found no difference in the dynamic viscosity of water under 1G and microgravity. We appreciated the astrophysicist's advice and dynamic viscosity is gravity independent. Ms. Naganuma built an apparatus to measure surface tension with the air bubble pressure method. Air was pushed into the needle in water using a syringe and the pressure changes in the air line measured with the pressure transducer. She found no significant difference in surface tension from 1G to Mars, Moon's gravity and microgravity. She also measured the contact angle of water droplet with the various diameters under microgravity using the two meter high drop tower. They signed as aligned water droplets on, on a polycarbonate plate and videotaped shape changes in the droplets with a microscope during gravity, <coughs> microgravity. She found when a diameter becomes smaller, small enough, in her case, one millimeter. Gravity depend dependency disappeared. Most of pore sizes in soil or porous media may be smaller than one millimeter. So we may safely assume that contact angle may not be affected by gravity. The capillary rise in the bundle of uh, small tubes may be affected by gravity because the acceleration due to gravity exists in the denominator, which indicates when G becomes zero, water will rise infinitely. Mr. Maruo <coughs> dropped the apparatus with the different shapes of glass tubes from the top of the 50 meter high drop tower. He found that water rolls to the end of the tubes in all shapes except one. The tube with suddenly expanded portion uh, stopped water from rising at the connection where the small tube <coughs> on top of the large. But connection with the large tube on top of the small one did not change <coughs> excuse me, the water uh, from rising. Let's get back to the basic again. We assume that intrinsic permeability in hydraulic conductivity <clears throat> did not change with gravity. Intrinsic permeability is a function of a pore space, a pore space configuration or porosity, meaning that particle size is related to intrinsic permeability. 
particle size itself is not affected by gravity, but the pore space configuration may suppress water flow under microgravity. <clears throat> we assumed that particle size affected flow, uh, water flow in porous media. Dr. Sato developed a new fancy apparatus to measure water infiltration in various particle size under microgravity. When microgravity reached the solenoid valve, opened to let water into the glass tube. Uh, glass beads color. Infiltration rate and wetting front infiltration rate and right here. And wetting front distance was were recorded with the video camera. In microgravity, the direction of column does not matter. So the vertical direction or horizontal direction under microgravity condi conditions, the infiltration does not matter. He found that cumulative infiltration into 0.4 millimeter glass beads was suppressed by microgravity compared with horizontal experiment. Here, the previous Jones and uh, Orr's study with 1.5 millimeter glass beads on the right hand side. The smaller the grass bees diameter, the closer the difference between horizontal and microgravity. Those results seems to reveal our previous speculation that pore space configuration suppress water flow in porous media under microgravity. Dr. Sato also conducted upward infiltration experiment with 0.4 millimeter glass beads under various gravity, microgravity, one sixth gravity, and one third gravity conditions. He analyzed the wetting front distance based on Julian's work. Right here. To add solid lines, indicate duly and theoretical lines, and blue dotted lines indicate experimental linear uh, feeding lines. As you can see, the microgravity conditions, the theory and the experiment were apart each other. But when gravity is get larger, the experimental lines get closer to theory. Any gravitational force may push water into odd shaped force space. Thus, water infiltrate more than under microgravity. Another possible explanation is that hydraulic conductivity become, becomes larger when gravity becomes larger, thus water infiltrates more in Mars gravity. We found microgravity and uh, water repellence makes uh, similar uh, defects in water infiltration. Both suppress infiltration by 30 to 20 percent. Here is the water repellent, uh, repellent soil, and uh, here is the microgravity. Water characteristic curves are also similar, similarly affected by microgravity and water repellency. Microgravity and water repellence both make metric potential gradient smaller. This may de 
decrease water movement, especially when water redistributes in porous media. We didn't uh, do any experiment for redistribution. So uh, this is uh, our next uh, challenge. In conclusion for the space uh, things, the smaller the particle size is, the less infiltration is affected by microgravity due to poor space configuration. Water redistribution in porous media and the microgravity needs further study. The present water infiltration theories could apply to the Mars gravity condition. So, we would say to raise potatoes may be harder on Mars. Let's look at the radio season fallout in Fukushima, Japan. This radiation air uh, dose distribution map first issued in April 21st, about a month after the nuclear power plant released the radioactive materials in 2011. High dose area are located near the uh, nuclear power plants. The high dose area located northwest directions from the plant. Our study area, uh, study site, Itate village is located at the north end of the high dose region. Meiji University is located here. It's about 250 kilometers southwest of the plant. Radio season fallout was detected at the Meiji University Ikuta campus as well, where we located. Dr. Shioda Zawa at the University of Tokyo may be the first to report how cesium deposits in Fukushima's farmland. He collected soil samples on May 24th, 2011, about uh, two months later uh, from the re release. He found under uh, undisturbed farmland, most cesium fallout is in top five centimeter layer. His finding affects, <clears throat> affected all the government-led decontamination project hereafter. When farmers cultivated after the cesium fallout, the cesium was uniformly distributed in the soil profile. Dr. Mizoguchi and colleagues measured 20 different locations throughout Itate village in Fukushima. And they found that most of the fallout cesium was located in uh, the top five centimeter layer of soil. Cesium slowly moved, moves in soil because cationic cesium ions are absorbed by soil particles, and vermiculite-like clay minerals fix in the frigid edge. Fortunately or not, Itate soils contain vermiculite and elite clay minerals in the soil, so the groundwater may not be contaminated. Radio season stays longer near, near the soil surface and keeps, keeps emitting hazardous radiation. Since most of the seeding cesium stayed at the soil surface, Dr. Mizoguchi and the colleagues developed a readily available method to remove the cesium from farmland by puddling and agitating surface soil with uh, these weeding 
tools for rice paddies. The paddled water was led to the next ditch and water infiltrated into the soil. They found that this method removed the most of concentrated uh, layers from the farmland. The puddled water was stored in this ditch until dry. Then Dr. Mizoguchi took soil samples from the wall and the bottom of the ditch to analyze cesium concentration. He, he found the, the cesium moved about 10 centimeters ahead from the side wall. Also, he found the cesium moved downward up to 30 cent, 13 centimeters from the bottom surface of the ditch. These results revealed that cesium was adsorbed or fixed by clay minerals. As we know, most of the whole earth cesium stayed in the topsoil. Dr. Mizoguchi tried another method to remove cesium from the soil by peeling off the top layer when it was frozen in winter. It was quite successful for a small area. He buried the topsoil containing the high cesium concentration and covered it with uh, about 50 centimeter thick soil in December 2012. In June 2013, the field where the highly contaminated topsoil was buried was flooded for growing rice. Since then, Dr. Mizoguchi has monitored the cesium distribution around the buried cesium every year, and he found no noticeable movement was detected in five years. It's 2015 to uh, 2022. The concentration just decreased by the natural decay of uh, radio cesium. The Japanese government started in 2012 to remove the top five centimeter of soil from all the farmland in Itata village and the surrounding areas. This top five centimeter removal was based on Dr. Shiozawa's observation. The farmlands where top five centimeter layer was removed, a cesium free fresh sandy soil was applied to compensation, but this fresh soil contains little nutrients for crops. The removed soils with grasses and tree branches were packed in one cubic meter containers and piled up in the clear, clean farmland in the village. These bags occupied most of the rice paddies in the village until recently. The cesium removal project in Itata village was completed in late 2016, and the forced evacuated village residents were allowed to return home on April 2017. The no number of re returned people gradually increased yearly, but there are still a tiny percentage. The temporary storage site for radioactive materials is in 
fully operational last few years, the piled bags are tra transported to this temporary storage site. This storage site will keep the radioactive materials until 2031, but further treatment is unclear. In the next year of the season release, the NPO members, farmers, and scientists started to grow rice. Uh, rice is the stable food for uh, the Japanese to investigate the effect of radio cesium on rice. The government was very, very reluctant to let us conduct this experiment initially. The experimental field was divided into various treatments. Removed cesium from the soil uh, and the cesium remained as it, it was. The additional potassium was applied to reduce cesium uptake by rice plants. In the carefully removed plots, puddling removal was repeated several times. Whereas in removed plot, puddling removal was made just once. The 2012 experiment showed promising results. Most of the cesium was contained in rice bran. And polished rice in green color had less than the instruments measuring low limit in all the treatments. The government, however, decided to monitor the season concentration of all the rice grown in Fukushima prefecture. So the Fukushima's rice ironically became the world's, world's safest rice. The Japanese government uh, established we established the maximum threshold concentration for acceptable cesium concentration in food as 100 becquerel per kilogram of, of dry mass. So all the uh, uh, polished rice, even brown rice, are below the government threshold. The initial uh, international uh, standard, codex standard it's called, is uh, for general food is 1,000 becquerel per kilogram. So the Japanese government uh, threshold is about, uh, was one-tenth of the codex standard. Dr. E reported the cesium transfer factor, that is the how, how much cesium is moved from the uh, soil to crops. Brown, for uh, brown rice decreased yearly because of progressing uh, cesium fixation by clay minerals. Rice store took up more cesium from the soil, about 100 times larger than brown rice. 100? No, 10 times, sorry. 10 times larger than brown rice. We, the Meiji University Group, have supported farmers in re-establishing greenhouse-grown vegetables. We installed 
a drip fertigation system controlled by sensors, the farmer and his wife successfully grow bell peppers, spinach, and tomatoes. We made two treatments for the greenhouse soil containing low cesium and high cesium concentration, about uh, 30 times higher in high cesium soil. We also applied excess potassium to reduce cesium uptake by crops to greenhouse soil. Here is a list of uh, transfer factors of various treatment for various vegetables. Tomatoes were the least uptake cesium, followed by bell pepper. The transfer factor for spinach was the largest. Leaves tend to contain more cesium than fruits. Excess potassium, uh, indicated by plus K, reduced cesium uptake, just like in rice plants. I should note that the highly contaminated soil uh, could <clears throat> uh, grow safe spinach when extra potassium was applied. In addition to farmlands, the government project also decontaminated the area surrounding houses up to 20 meters. We started to monitor how the cesium moved to the uh, cesium removed area on a slope. Uh, this side the, of the slope where the cesium was removed from the, the top hills cesium are still remained. We collected soil samples on the steep hills uh, frequently. The surface soils uh, from the uh, assigned locations were collected on a, a slope next to the farmer's uh, house in this picture. We have uh, 15 different locations. Since 2015, we have measured cesium concentration in each location. Cesium remained upper portion, middle portion, lower, and bottom portion of the slope. Mr. Sunakawa he found that cesium concentration increased in 2011 and decreased again in the cesium remaining areas at the highest elevation on the hill. Uh, this indicated the orange dots. He described temporal changes in cumulative uh, cesium concentration with cumulative precipitation. The heavy rain seems to remove the cesium to the lower area on the uh, top from the uh, cesium remained area. We excavated the soil to uh, measure cesium movement in the soil profile at the hill foot. foot. Mr. Sunakawa found that the most of the whole out cesium moved down to six centimeter last 10 years after the cesium released. Deep in soil, 160 to 180 centimeters, he found a trace of cesium. We suspect some preferential flow transported the 
fall out cesium deep down. As Dr. Horton suggested when he visited the experimental site in 2018, I zoomed up the upper uh, 80 centimeter in the slope soil. On the right hand side, I show you the season distribution in Nagasaki after 48 years of the uh, A-bomb blast. In Itate soil, we estimate the cesium will, will gradually move downwards. In conclusion for uh, fallout cesium, the polished rice contains a trace of cesium. Excess K potassium application reduced cesium transfer to crops. Cesium transfer factor becomes smaller year and year, resulting from fixed by clay minerals. Due to rainfall events, Cesium gradually moved from the upper to the lower on a sloped surface. Cesium gradually moved deeper in the soil profile. That's all for my talk. Thank you. Well, and thank you, Professor Navarro. These were really, really interesting topics, ones we don't hear much about. Um, so uh, I, I'm willing to bet there are lots of questions from the audience. Um, uh, how should we do this? Can you e either just speak up or Laura, perhaps, can you monitor the, the chat box? And if people are raising their hands, call on them. Let's see. Do... Yeah, yeah. Um, I failed to mention in your introduction, Professor Naborio, that you are here for four months uh, as a visiting yes. scientist in Professor Horton's group. Um, yes, that's correct. Right. Okay. Professor that's Horton, it. do you have any comments to add right so now? This, this is Brian Hornbuckle. I, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. So I, this is a question about the first part with, you know, water infiltration. Um in places other than earth essentially and i just want to make sure i understand correctly is that right now the your your theory or your thought process your your conceptual understanding of why you see what you do is because in gra gravity tends to kind of push the water into larger pores because what i remember is that the smaller the pore size, the smaller the particle size, the smaller the pore size, it got closer and closer to what you expected. But when you had larger pore sizes, it got farther away. And so you're thinking that it has to do with gravity pushing water into pores. Is that correct? Yes, uh, we speculate. So yes, we think so. Especially this kind of a, a sudden uh, extended portion may hinder the water flow. We've got Michael Thompson that has raised in his hand as well. I'm gonna go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Um... Thank you very much. Really, I, I, I'm going to ask a question about uh, the cesium portion of your talk. And I have a couple of questions, but maybe the, the first one is, can you tell us more about the nature of the soils on both the sloping part of the area affected by the fallout and also on the lower portions of the landscape. How do those soils differ from one another? Could, do, you, do you know how they might be classified in a class like the FAO classification system or in US soil taxonomy? 
Uh, I, I think they are, as you can see the, uh, here, uh, it might, I think the uh, uh, Andesol. Pile, both, both Andesols? Uh, yes, but down here, uh, the, uh, those area is, uh, the bedrock is uh, granite. So uh, most of the soil is from the weathered granite. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know the uh, uh, soil taxonomy. Okay, so that's where the vermiculite came from. Yes. Presumably from the granite, weathered, yes. weathered granite. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have one other question, and it has to do with um, the rice. And I, I'm so, you know, I know so little about rice. Do you know, do you have any ideas about why the cesium-137 was more concentrated in the bran than in other portions of the grain? Uh, I have no idea, oh, okay. but more, more, more uh, cesium is contained in straw. Ah, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Well, yeah. I remember from my years in rice research that uh, potassium deficiency in the straw was a common problem. Uh, farmers, rice farmers in Asia were often not adding enough potassium fertilizer. They didn't realize, as Professor Naborio said, the straw needs a lot of potassium. Mm. Well, okay. Thank you. Okay. I was gonna. I was gonna yeah. ask. Yeah, I was gonna ask a couple, two questions. I guess uh, it's on its part. One, uh, the first question. First of all, I appreciate your presentation. This is uh, Thanos Papanicolaou from NLAE, the National Lab for Agriculture and the Environment. Um, a colleague of uh, Dan Ox. Um, my first question is, I guess I'm going to challenge a little bit the conclusion. I guess it was that um, it is difficult to, it's more difficult to grow potatoes on Mars, correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Have you considered at all, probably you have not, but have you considered at all the, the role of uh, microtopography, surface microtopography, and the implications that this may have on the porous structure uh, within, you know, the top soil, the top 30 centimeters or so, because that may change a little bit your answer. Yes. yes uh, you have considered you, you let, let let me uh, uh, rephrase your question. Uh, in uh, top thirty centimeter, is supposed to be the uh, uh, smaller uh, diameter in Mars. Therefore, there might be not harder on Mars to grow potatoes. Is that your oh? No, uh, I, not the size distribution, but uh, my sort of uh, um, suggestion is that changes in my to, in microtopography due to management here on Earth may have um, a change in the porous structure network, uh, and thus you may have a different you know, infiltration rates that are not strictly dependent on size distribution. Yes, exactly. Yes, uh, the uh, soil management with the, say, uh, adding uh, uh, organic materials may uh, change, yes. Sure, okay. Um, and the second question is, uh, I guess location, 
at the hill slope or um, you know where you are in 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 terms of uh, uh, the side slope may have implications in terms of mixing of material and therefore where your um, peak value in cesium 137. 137 may be in that profile. Usually, uh, what we see is that the peak value um, is below the surface, is found below the surface and uh, at the bottom of, in a depot center. Usually, that's at the top of a hill slope. So, you get kind of a peak type of distribution. Um, but the peak value is below the uh, top uh, surface. Or uh, you may get even a bimodal type of distribution, multi-peakiness, depending on how much mixing you have. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, you talk about this part? Yes. Yeah, it, uh, that's a good good question. We did not uh, think about uh, yet, but uh, yeah, we 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 need to think uh, the uh, this uh, twin peak may may uh, how, how mm -hmm. uh, the those uh, made. Yes, thank you. That's a, a very good uh, part. Uh, also, the, in, in the Nagasaki, they have also the uh, uh, different uh, peaks. All right. Yep. Thank you. Well, thank you for your excellent presentation. I, I like the microphysic, microphysics that you consider there, especially in the in the in the first part of your excellent presentation. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, thank you, Thanos. Uh, any more, more questions? We're at 5 o'clock, but if people wish to stay on and ask questions, we, we won't have many chances to talk to an expert on these type of topics. So if you have questions, speak up now. Those yes. who need to go on, please go ahead and th thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. I'll ask something for Kasuke. <laughs> You uh, indicated that the uh, infiltration and the water retention curve were kind of similar for the water repellent soil and for the microgravity soil. Is that correct? Yes, sir. But you didn't give any explanation of why that might be. You know, a lot of a lot of people that study water repellent soils focus a lot on the contact angle. Yes. But at least in the studies that you reported, you didn't show any impact on contact angle. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. We assume the uh the uh on the uh water droplet, the contact angle does not change. Uh, when the droplet diameter is uh, one millimeter or less. But in the uh, soil, uh, the, the, that is the, the droplet on the polycarbonate uh, plate that may, may not differ from the uh, uh, porous uh, pore spaces in, in, in so soil-like material. Therefore, the microgravity makes the larger contact angle in, in poor water. That's why the, the microgravity make the similar uh, shape as the water, water repellent soil. Well, often, you know, on water retention relationships, people often look at the surface tension. Mm -hmm. And I, if I remember correctly, you also said you didn't notice any any effect on surface tension. Under That's the correct. Different, That's yeah. correct. Yeah. So I was just curious if you had any thoughts on 
is is it just a serendipity is it just a happenstance that the the water re, the the uh non-wetting soil and the microgravity had similar water uh water infiltration and water retention or do you have any further ideas on why that they may be similar uh i, I think microgravity make the the water in pores make uh, uh more make more of the with, with the larger contact angle like like uh, uh bees bees like a uh, water uh shape just like in uh water repellent soil in uh micro scale but we don't know the uh right answer we be because we did not uh observe uh that that kind of uh micro scale in, in, of uh pore water gotcha thanks dr naborio welcome okay further questions from anybody just speak up i guess you don't need to raise your hand anymore um i have one question uh on the cesium part uh so you demonstrated a way to remove much of the cesium from the rice paddy soils uh, but of course surrounding those fields is much natural land those steep slopes uh currently what is the uh is that land currently uninhabitable are people not allowed to walk exactly yes uh, uh are people allowed to live in those lands now you mentioned at one point that some people a small minority of the people, a small proportion of people have moved back to the area, but are they told to stay off the natural lands? No, uh, they they could, uh, they are allowed to return home, but the uh, these uh, uh, mountains, uh, forest area are st still uh, uh, contaminated uh, with the cesium. So government doesn't say anything about the uh, what to do or what not to do in the forest. But they said, the government said, don't eat uh, uh, wild uh, mushroom or wild uh, vegetables from the, the mountains. But people are allowed to live uh, back home and live there why the a uh, few people uh, uh, a few percentage of people uh, come back uh, so far is uh, for last seven years the especially young uh, people established their life in in the in their evacuated places so they and uh, they have uh, uh, kids, <clears throat> they are grown in th that area. So it's really uh, probably uh, no uh, big reason to return uh, to the village. <coughs> and what would you recommend? Would it be, if you were living in that village, would you walk up and spend time up in those natural lands up in the hills yes uh when we go there and we woke up in the uh, mountains and uh, we still have uh, uh, some uh, measurement in top of the mountain and we would like to see how uh, the uh, nature's changes after the uh, fallout okay very interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. Last call for questions. I would probably speak up now. Um, yes, the people are leaving now. So I will thank you as well, Dr. Naborio. This was a very interesting presentation, beautiful slides, and you were very easy to understand. Um, it's no easy task to give a presentation in a different language, and you, you did wonderfully. So. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, thank you, Dr. Naborio, for presenting as well. You and you taught us many new things this afternoon. So.